So You Can Play That Game is proudly sponsored by NiceGameShop.com, the place to go for rare and unusual Asian games. Hi, I'm Michael. Take a seat while I tell you about Near and Far by Red Raven Games. Now, this is a worker placement game with choose your own story adventures built in. The way this works is you have the town and on your turn you can go to the town and go to one of the various buildings on it which are your worker placement locations and when you go there you'll do the action of this. It might give you the ability to recruit people, it might give you the ability to get a mount so that you can carry treasure, it might give you bread so that you can get a mount, it might allow you to go to the mine and get resources that way or you can go to the town hall and do trading. Those are the various boring town actions that you can do. And that's a big part of what's going to be happening in this. What's interesting about the town is when there are other people in a location you want to go to, you go, out of my way, and you have a jewel. So it's pistols at dawn, and this is done through dice rolls. Whoever has the highest will win. Now, in addition to the dice rolls, some of your characters that you can get that you can recruit from the saloon will have swords because they're good at fighting and they'll boost your dueling. You can also boost dueling with health, which you gain from your adventurers when you choose to go adventuring. And I'll come to that in a moment. And if you succeed, then you get to do the location. You can choose to either do this dishonorably or honorably, which will gain you reputation. Or you can fail, at which point you don't get to do the action. It's kind of a wasted turn, a skip your turn. So that's the town. The reason you're going to be going to the town, though really in this game, what it all comes down to is the adventuring. And that happens on this map here, which is really cool that it's a ring binder map and it just works really functionally. It's a good idea that they thought to do this. It doesn't feel like, oh, paper boards, oh, rubbish. The fact that the way it just feels nice. And of course, it's got that typical artwork that Ryan Lockett does that just makes it pop as a game that runs through all of the games that he designs. He does all the art himself. And of course, you'll notice that this is very similar to Above and Below and is set in the same world as Above and Below. In fact, the first map that you can play has above and below on there. So that kind of just shows it. What you then do here is you move around and you move around using your health, unless there are camps there, because camps you can just safely move through. But the other thing those camps are going to do is gain your resources when you place them. And placing camps is a big deal in this game. So. Firstly, it's going to make it safer to move around, it's going to gain you resources, and it's also going to make you closer to ending the game, because the game ends once someone's got rid of all the camps off their board. That's then the end of the game. But the most important thing about your moving around these maps is that you're going to hit spots with letters or numbers on, and then have adventurers. And these adventures are very similar to Above and Below, if you've ever played that. You're going to have a book, you're going to look up what you're going to find. You'll notice that the book in this is a lot bigger and thicker than that for Above and Below, and that's because there's more here, but it's also because there's more different play modes. You see, you've got this kind of first map for you guys to just kind of try out the game. But then you also have campaign play and you also have kind of character mode, which is like mini campaigns focused specifically on the characters you're playing. Now, these are all really cool and interesting. I love this whole story mechanic. The fact that you read out a paragraph and you can get as into it as you want. You can do silly voices, etc. And yeah, it's just fun. And then you pick which one you're going to do. Now, one thing that's kind of a shame is that you have these challenges that you need to overcome based on the options you're picking. But because you're able to spend your health in order to boost your result, you pretty much never fail or very rarely fail, meaning you're pretty much just guaranteed to succeed, which takes away the risk factor and makes it almost feel like you might as well not be rolling the dice a lot of the time. So that's kind of a shame and I feel it could work better potentially but 
Otherwise, you've got these really cool stories, which is great. And then in campaign mode, you've got your characters that are leveling up and gaining new skills. And even better, you do a quest and some quests will go, here's a keyword you're going to add to your character sheet to show you've done that quest. And then you later on might encounter another quest that because you did that other quest and gained the keyword, and what keyword you gain might have depended on the outcome of the quest, you have different options of what you're going to do next. That is just absolutely cool. I absolutely love that in this. And you get the same in the character mode of that happening as well. And as I say, you build up XP as you do these adventures. That is what this game really is about. But it is still got that worker placement. You've still got to get the stuff to go adventuring. And that's where the game starts to kind of have problems, really. You see, when you're doing the worker placement, if there's only two of you playing, you've got someone permanently there, and then you guys are just dotting around, bouncing around, you never really feel like there's much conflict going on, like there's much competition over the spaces you want to go for. There's just this race to get to the quest first, which exists there with a four player game as well. But you have to be more conscious about what you're going to when you're going to have to do jewels, even though you don't want to do jewels. Whereas in a two player game, you go, I'll wait a turn because they have to move off. And then you can go to the location you want. And so this game doesn't scale well for that reason. However, it is amazing at four players. It's good at three players and it's an OK two player game you still have that story to play through in the campaign. And that's what really saves it and makes it an okay two-player game rather than just a, yeah, I wouldn't play this as a two-player game. This is a fun, good two-player game playing through the campaign and the story mode. But then, once you've done all that, all you're left with is the arcade mode. And I wouldn't really play the arcade mode with less than four players. Now, another thing to talk about is the accessibility on this. I've quickly gone through how to play this game, but actually there's a lot more depth to it and a lot more little fine points. You've got to go through all the different locations, all the little exceptions, all the little rules, and it's a lot for new players to take in and a lot to go through that takes quite a while to do. So it's not particularly accessible for new players, and especially people who are not familiar with board games, like modern board games, this is going to be particularly difficult to teach them and get them into, which is a real shame because the whole storytelling aspect can really draw people in. But I'd really just kind of say play above and below as an easier introduction to that, and that's not a hugely easy game to get into, but it's easier than this. So what else is there to talk about? We talk about scaling, accessibility, complexity of actual play once you've learnt it, once you, you know, you've got past that access issue, is actually really quite simple. However, at times, if you're playing with the wrong people, there can be a bit of analysis paralysis that goes on. As you get more used to the game, that definitely does go down. But with new players, it is more common. But that's to be expected with most games of this kind of weight, really. Now, I've already spoken about the binder and how that's cool, how the artwork is cool. All the components in this are really good quality. I really do think this is a good game. If you're going to be wanting to play that campaign, no matter the player numbers, if you're going to play that campaign, it's a good, interesting story arc you can play through with the different characters and stuff. So I'd highly recommend it for that. But if you're playing four player, it is definitely at its best. So that's my thoughts on Near and Far by Ryan Lockett and Red Raven Games. I do hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you have, please do check out the rest of the videos on the channel as well as subscribing, sharing, liking and commenting. And as always, thanks for watching and bye for now.